What is the price of functioning <clears throat> in God's glory? <clears throat> There's two ways of ministering. There is the ministry of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which is what all of us use, um, praying for a person that is sick, giving a word of prophecy to a person, uh, casting out a demon. These, are, these all come, or preaching the gospel, these all come by the voice of the Holy Spirit. But there's a higher ministry, which is what God is working on today. It's the ministry of God's glory. Whereas in the ministry of spiritual gifts, people are stepping out to obey God's voice. In the ministry of God's glory, it is God, the one himself, who is ministering. And we are running after him. We see this ministry of God's glory in Exodus chapter 40 after the tabernacle had been raised up by Moses, that Moses was unable to go into the tabernacle because God's glory had filled it. And because God's glory, once that God's glory is there, you cannot minister there. Because God does not let you, because it's Him and Him alone. So it's a lot more exciting to minister in God's glory because in the ministry of God's glory, not only is not only are not only are you chasing God, but the anointing is far greater because it's not your anointing trying to obey God, but it's just God's anointing operating only by Himself. Number two, any limitations that we put, because as much as we try to minister in spiritual gifts, we always have the 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 we, we always have this we always have the um we always have the limitation of doubt, of fear, of, of insecurity, or of saying that I give a wrong word. But in the ministry of God's glory, He's doing everything. He has no doubt. He has no fear. He has no limitations. And your only job is to catch up with Him and do exactly what He's doing. So the ministry of God's glory is a much higher ministry. So this is what I want to talk to you about today. And I want to take your attention to um, what has to happen for you to minister in God's glory. Here are three things that I feel are important. There's obviously more than three things, but here is three things. One thing that God has to do in our life is we have to become more effective than we are efficient. Efficiency is what most of most people do and it's what most churches do and it's planning out your services, planning out your meetings, planning out your agenda in a way that you're going to save money, that you're going to economize, that you're going to make a profit, that you're going to bring in more people, that you're going to have a, a program for for the kids, everything that seems logical and good and great ideas, that kind of stuff, is efficiency. Effectiveness many times is not efficiency, and effectiveness has to do with doing things that are going to bring you closer to your results. So Jesus is a lot more effective than He is efficient. And we as people are a lot more efficient than we are effective. Because Jesus is not trying to always beautiful th beautify things. He's not trying to be logical. He's getting results. And many times when we minister to people, especially in the glory, what we see is we... Well, I, I'm going to talk about this, about uh, how, what, kind of, what kind of words does God give to us. In, in the glories, but notice the effectiveness of Jesus versus the efficiency. When, 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 look at the effectiveness of Jesus versus his efficiency. When there was 5,000 people to feed, he had two pieces of, of fish and five pieces of bread. Let me tell you, let me ask you how efficient it is that you with two pieces of fish and five loaves of bread, you're going to feed 5,000 people. And yet, he did a miracle and he brought the results. When 
The wine ran out at a party. Was he efficient? Did he go out and he says, give me some money and let's buy a lot more wine? No. He took two pots of water and he turned them into wine. That's not efficiency, that's effectiveness. He brought the results that he wanted to bring, but definitely he was not efficient. Um, when the fisher, when the apostles had been fishing the whole night and they had brought in all their boats and they were cleaning their boats and they were probably exhausted, wanted to go home to their wives and Jesus shows up and says to them, take your boats out again for another catch. You know, can you imagine the shock on these people's faces? But they obeyed him. No, no efficiency in that but effectiveness because the results of the huge catch came when they obey God. Or when the, or when the blind man, the, 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 the blind man, what does Jesus do? Does he take him to a doctor? No, he spits in his eyes. What kind of efficiency is that? That's not, that's not efficient, that's not profitable, that's not, this doesn't look good in front of men, but that in itself brought the results. So we need to become effective we need, to, we need to say, God, what do we do to bring results? And when we're led by the Spirit of God, that's when we bring results. Number two, box thinking. We are box thinkers. We're box thinkers. We have ministry in a box. We have our church services in a box. We have our finances in a box. We have God in a box. We have our lives in a box. And because we receive according to our faith. If our faith level is to have everything in a box, we're gonna receive out of a box. But God is a linear thinker and his thinking goes higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. So to start to operate in the glory of God, number one, we have to become effective. We have to say, God, I don't want to do things that are gonna be efficient. I don't wanna do things that look polished and good for men. I want to do things that are going to bring results. And that's how God teaches you how to minister. Also, you say God, and it's painful. The renewing of the mind, when we talk about the renewing of the mind, we're asking God to break us out. Of the when we're praying for the renewing of the mind, which is a necessity, we're asking God to break us out of box thinking. And it's painful, it's scary. But again, if we're going to minister in the glory, we have to become linear thinkers, greater, higher, more and more. If we say, well, you know what? We cannot let the Holy Spirit flow in here because people are going to get offended. Box thinking. Okay, so then God, God says, then your church, then, then, then God says, your church service will become a box church service. Hey, shh. Sorry, this is all part of live TV. <laughs> uh, number three, understanding versus knowledge. Very important. Many times when God tells us to step out as human beings, we wanna understand, we say, God, why do you want us to step out? Why do you want me to prophesy to this person? Why do you want me to give a word? God will never tell you the why. You step out not by understanding, you step out by knowledge. I just know that God told me to talk to that person. I just know that God told me to prophesy to that person. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand why he told me, but he told me to do it, so I'm gonna do it. You step out by knowledge and not by understanding. The understanding comes as you step out on the knowledge. But many people step out, want, want, refuse to do anything for the Lord un, unless God gives them understanding. And let me tell you something you will die, become an old person and die because God will not give you the understanding. What he'll give you is knowledge. So again, these three things, box thinking, efficiency versus effectiveness, and, and understanding versus knowledge, those three things must be done in our lives if we are going to learn to function in God's glory. Then I put this here. This is how we see in the spirit today. When we get to heaven, I don't think that we're gonna be seeing things like in the spirit. I think that the glory of God and the knowledge of God and the presence of God will be totally evident to us. But so far, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. 
Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also, that's in heaven, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Notice what I put here. I put the word darkly, is the word enigma. And Google that word enigma right here. Google the word enigma. Find out what the word enigma means. It's a, it's a dark image, it's hard to understand, it's mysterious, it's puzzling, it's difficult, it's a mystery, it's a paradox, it's an unsolved problem, it's a question mark. See, many times when God get, tells me to give a vision to a person, it becomes, a, becomes an enigma. I'll prophesy things to people that I have no idea what I'm seeing, no idea what I'm saying, or God tells me to do that, and I have no idea why, why God tells me to do that. It's an enigma. But God is doing that to bring results. Because if I say, well, God, no, because I don't know this person, I've never met this person, uh, uh, you know, this person is a stranger to me, that's efficiency limitations but if God tells me go I've gone to so many people and I've given words to people that I have no understanding it's an enigma but they understand because God knows what's in their heart and you know what happens results God's after results if you're in a minister in God's power and glory you have to cut out efficiency in many ways and say God I want results I want results so enigma is the way that God speaks to us. I encourage you, go to Google and find the word enigma and find out this is how God speaks to you. So the reason why I tell you that is so you can be free to say, to not expect God to be clear with you, not expect every word to be clear, not expect you to understand everything, but to learn how to function in puzzles and in hard visions and in effectiveness in results and in linear thinking versus box thinking and in knowledge versus understanding. So to finish what I'm gonna do, part of the process that God does to break us out of this limitations and allow us to start to function in the flow of His glory, in that strange flow of faith of His glory, there are a few things I wanna tell you and then we're gonna finish up for tonight because as you can tell, the sun is setting and my battery is almost out. 1 Corinthians 4 and 10, you see it there? I think it's here. Mm, yeah, right there. We are fools for Christ's sake. You are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. What did I put that word for fools? What do you see that word? Morons. That word today is almost like a bad word. Because a moron is, I'm gonna be very honest with you, a moron is a stupid, stupid person. It's a dumb, stupid person. That's a moron. Now, is God calling us to be a moron? No. But the way that we have to be free to do the crazy, enigmatic things of God, we must become fools for Christ. We must, we must, we must be free enough from the reputation, from the love of the, of the respect of man and the love of earthly reputation. We must be free enough to be morons for Christ, to look dumb and to look stupid to people, it, because God is telling us to do something crazy because He's not after efficiency. He's after results. So many times, if we appear weird or foolish be, be before people, it's because God is bypassing the efficiency to give us the results. But people say, hey, I don't want to look like a moron, I don't want to look stupid before people. I want to look, I'm the pastor of the church, or I'm the deacon, or I'm the prophet. I am, I am, I am, I am prophet, I am prophet Jose. You know, I want that title of prophet Jose. Well, I'll be a title. I, the respect of men, but you know what? I will operate in God's glory. If you're a man of, or, or a woman of God, then you're so, um, if you're so, if, if it's so important for you to be recognized as a pastor or as a prophet or as an apostle, if it's so important to be recognized as the anointed man of God, you'll be recognized, but you know, you, you won't flow in that anointing. 
you won't flow in the uh, glory because that glory is reserved for fools for Christ. Those are willing to just look weird, to do the strange things, to do the things that are, that are out of the box, that are not box thinking, that are going to bring the results of God. Loss of earthly of earthly reputation, I'm sorry. Um, I put this wrong. We have to lose our earthly reputation, so we we rather please God rather than man. We must be a God pleaser more than a man pleaser. And to finish this up, I think that's all I'm going to say. I think I'm going to I'm going to say. You're getting what I'm saying. Enough being said. Let's pray, Father. Thank you for my friends. I pray for that everybody here. We'll learn how to function in your glory and have a great Tuesday evening with your family and friends. And we'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name.